Why, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a revolting review. I'm Random Ross, and today I am reviewing the film Male Violent. <laughs> So this is a British horror that is directed by Olaf D. Fuel or something, uh, based on the book Hush by Ava uh, Constantinopoulos or something, starring Florence Pugh, Ben Lloyd Hughes, Scott Chan uh, Chander, Chanders, uh, George Bevan, uh, James Cosmo, and Scylla and Meyer. Uh, so I've already said it's a Brit horror. So this is set in 1986 Glasgow, where two siblings named Angela and um, Angela and Jackson, with their friends uh, Elliot and Beth, well Beth being uh, Jackson's girlfriend, you know, these two American, you know, uh, Florence Pugh and Ben Lloyd Hughes play two American student siblings that are in Glasgow in 1986 where they you know are fake well they're paranormal well they say they're paranormal investigators and Florence Pugh's character Angela has the gift of communicating with the dead but it's all a scam and they just make money until one day when they get a phone call from uh, a woman named Mrs. Green, played by Scylla Eimeyer, how you pronounce her name, you know, from Dinner Ladies, and, um, you know, to investigate some paranormal goings on. But they get more than what they bargained for when paranormal activity seems all too real. And Angela starts to see the ghosts for real. And also it goes back to their mother as well, you know, who apparently had this gift and killed herself because of it. And maybe now it's passed on to Angela. And of course they make a horrific truth about the ghost girls that are in the house. And it turns into a horrific nightmare when Miss Green isn't who she appears to be. And it's all a fight for survival. So that is pretty much the story and the whole plot there of this film. So what did I like about it? Well, I, I, you know, this wasn't really something too original, you know, like paranormal con artists and that, and then it turned out to be the real deal. But I did like that there was more to it than just, you know, real paranormal activity, but that Mrs. Green was a deranged sociopath and her son was also the same and what have you. And she was, had a deranged fixation with sewing mouth shut and silencing people which is what we see in that film um yeah i i like the the concept of the film though the 80s setting and our cast in it including florence Pugh. Uh, like i say florence Pugh, she's an actress that i've you know grown to admire and like over the last few years given seeing her in midsummer and then i actually saw her in well we all saw her in black widow and hawkeye so her mcu character who I also like as well. And yeah, she was great in this one. I gotta say, this movie definitely went under the radar. It was a pro it was it was definitely after Fighting with the Fam Fighting with My Family, which is a bioepic which she starred in as well, uh, which I've not seen, probably should. And it was just before Midsummer. This came out in 2018 and it dropped on Netflix. I just gotta say, this film clearly went under the radar because I'd not heard of it or knew of this movie's existence until like last night of recording this video. I, I was like just scrolling through Netflix, looking at the horror section, till this film caught my attention because I noticed Florence Pugh was in it. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll check this out. Nothing else to watch and bored out of my mind. I, I gave it a watch. It's about 90 minutes long or just under. And the first half hour, we see like you know they're fake they're not you know they they know that this is all that they're setting up you know just a scam for people who genuinely believe that they are being visited by ghosts but then it all gets all real 
I did like the makeup effects and the practical gore in this too. There, there wasn't much digital CGI in this. There were, of course, for some of the ghostly characters where we see the ghosts fade in and out, you know, whether they be digital or not. They were, you know, all right effects. But, um, yeah, this had the, the haunted house trope with some psychological torture porn tropes as well, i got to say. And, um, yeah... I like the character of Angela, how she eventually develops her sort of ghostly abilities and then also sees what have you. And yeah, of course, her character, the character of Jackson, her brother, was a bit of a dick in it. Of course, he was indebted to some loan sharks, so he needed the gig to make money and that. But he was a bit of an unlikable character but eventually you know, you did kind of feel for him when he was being tortured and killed uh, of course the other characters like Beth Jackson's girlfriend I feel she had the less develop the least development in it all like she was just there uh, the character of Elliot he was also I feel a bit like he was just there too of course they were meant to be the technicians and that for the whole ghost haunted thing um, but I did like our main antagonist, Mrs. Green, played by Scylla Aymire. Is that how you pronounce her name? I don't know, but I've seen her in many stuff over the years in British stuff. Like, um, you know, I mean, I've seen her in, I think she was in Dinner Ladies, which is a British sitcom. I don't know if you've heard of it or seen it. She was in, like, Nanny McPhee and was also in... Um, you know, a cure for wellness and other, you know, she was in The Borrowers, that's what she was in as well, uh, so I thought that's another familiar face to me because she's one of them women actresses that I know with the face and everything, so is this a good film? Well, like I say, the first half hour is sort of a, you know, leaning towards it, but then the last hour it definitely picks up from there and it gets quite brutal. And unsettling some bits, especially with the ghost girls with their ghostly appearance in their mouths so shut and everything. And they do this whole paranormal scream or something that's deafening. Um But yeah, I I, I went into this film thinking it was gonna be like, you know, like I said, a, you know, psychic con people and then they get more than what they bargain for when it's the real deal and that. But they did do something a little you know, surprising in there too in the final act. So, um, male violent. Why is it called that? I mean, I, I don't really know why, but I thought this was a decent film. Like I say, I, I thought it was okay. It was dark. It had some dark cinematography in there, but like I say, haunted house effects and what have you. And the 80 scene, I feel, did our two, you know, sibling characters need to be American? Were they even being American? I don't know, but still, it was okay for me. Like I say, this film's on Netflix, so you can watch it on that if you want. So, yeah, there you go. So, what am I going to rate this one? I think I'll give this film male violent. I'll give it... I mean, do I have anything to dislike? Well, like I say, there was a bit of a slow burn at the start in the first half hour and thinking, okay, this is getting a bit boring. But like I say, the final act definitely escalated from there. So I'm going to give this film three and a half stabs out of five. Three and a half stabs out of five for male violence. So have you seen this one? Let me know all that down in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and to share with your friends. And feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell. I've been Random Ross and this has been Revolting Reviews. So, you know, be sure to do all that if you want to see more from this channel. I've got all my social media links down below which you can check out. So, yeah, until next time, don't have nightmares.